Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Sol Soliton's first quarter 2020 earnings conference call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. After the speaker's prepared remarks, we'll be having a question and answer session. To ask a question during the session, you will need to press star then 1 on your touchtone telephone. If you require any further assistance during the call, please press star then 0. As a reminder, today's conference is being recorded. I would like to introduce your host for today's conference, Ms. Carol Ruth, founder and president of the Ruth Group, Soliton's investor relations firm. Please go ahead. Thank you, operator, and welcome to everyone participating on today's call. This call is also being broadcast live over the Internet at Soliton.com, and a replay of the call will be available on the company's website for 30 days. This morning, we posted an updated investor presentation, which can be accessed from the investors section of our website. With me today are Wally Clem, co-founder and executive chairman, Chris Capelli, co-founder, chief executive and scientific officer, Laurie Bisson, chief financial officer. In our remarks today, we will include statements that are considered forward-looking statements within the meaning of United States securities law. In addition, management may make additional forward-looking statements in response to your questions. Forward-looking statements are based on management's current assumptions and expectations of future events and trends, which may affect the company's business, strategy, operations, or financial performance. A detailed discussion of the risks and uncertainties that the company faces is contained in its annual report on Form 10-K, quarterly reports on Form 10-Q, and current reports on Form 8-K. Actual results may differ materially from those expressed in or implied by the forward-looking statements. The company undertakes no application to update or review any estimate, projection, or forward-looking statement. The company intends to file the Form 10-Q for the quarter ended March 31, 2020, by the end of today. The company has allotted 30 minutes for today's call, uh, and now I'll turn the call over to Wally. Thanks, Carol, and good morning. We're pleased to share with you our first quarter 2020 results and provide further color on the next chapter of Soliton's story especially given the lingering uncertainty regarding COVID-19. As you may recall, Soliton announced in early April a revised launch plan for our Rapid Acoustic Pulse, or RAP, device, given the impact of the current crisis on the aesthetic and financial markets. To launch an aesthetic device amid this global pandemic would clearly be ill-advised, and sticking to our original launch plan wouldn't have made sense for us or for our customers. Instead, we've chosen to delay the limited launch of the RAP device until the aesthetic industry demonstrates a return to normalcy or at least a patty device until station. In the interim, we'll focus on advancing the regulatory profile of the cellulite indication so that when the expected levity of the RAP device becomes feasible, both the tattoo removal and the cellulite improvement indications can be incorporated into the same device. This, of course, is conditioned upon the FDA's clearance of the cellulite treatment indication. Additionally, we're using the added time to incorporate manufacturing cost down design work so that we will be able to launch our initial product with improved margins. Of course, the COVID-19 crisis is forcing companies to reevaluate strategy and make difficult decisions, but in our case, also affording us the time to develop a more valuable product for our customers, which we believe will position Soliton for long-term success. Although COVID-19 affected all of us during the first quarter, it did not prevent Soliton from achieving some very important milestones. First, we submitted and received FDA for the special 510K pre-market notification for our Generation 2 RAP device. And in addition, we completed the pivotal cellulite clinical trial, as well as the 12-week 12 12 week keloid and hypertrophic scar proof of concept clinical trial. I'll now pass the call on to Chris Capelli, our CEO, for more context around the operational and regulatory progress made and our upcoming milestones. Chris? Thank you, Wally, and good morning. As Wally touched upon, 
During the first quarter, we filed for special 510K pre-market notification with the FDA for our Generation 2 Rapid Acoustic Pulse device and received FDA clearance in early March. The special 510K filing designates the device as an accessory to the 1064 Q-switch laser for tattoo removal on the arms, legs, and torso in Fitzpatrick skin type 1 through 3 individuals. Clinical trials have demonstrated that using the company's RAP device in conjunction with a Q-switch laser allows for multiple laser passes in a single treatment session, resulting in accelerated tattoo fading in comparison to traditional laser treatments. The Generation 2 RAP device delivers the same tattoo removal therapy as the Generation 1 device, but is slightly modified for improved ease of use in the physician's office. The Generation 2 RAP device has the same underlying technology as the RAP device that will be used in the U.S. commercial launch. Only the tattoo removal indication was reviewed by the FDA in this submission and cleared for marketing, but similar technology was utilized in the company's Sailake trials and other proof-of-concept trials. Upon completion of the pivotal cellulite trial, our data was accepted for presentation at the annual American Academy for Dermatology Conference, the AAD, in March of this year. But due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the medical meeting was postponed. The AAD has now notified us that a virtual conference is expected to take place in mid-June, where we will present our cellulite trial findings to the scientific community. We are very excited for this new RAP indication. As cellulite affects up to 90% of women with over a billion dollars spent annually on treatments in the U.S. The results of the pivotal study will support our anticipated 510K filing with the FDA for the treatment of cellulite during the second quarter. Currently, we believe we could receive an FDA clearance for the cellulite indication as early as the fourth quarter of 2020, but possibly in the first quarter of 2021 should we experience delays in the FDA's process. Although we are highly focused on advancing the cellulite indication in the near term, the heloid and hypertrophic scar indication is an exciting potential expanded indication longer term. Clinical results from our 12-week keloid and hypertrophic scar proof of concept study, which was completed in January, were very encouraging, demonstrating approximately 30% average reduction in scar volume from the single initial treatment. The overall average reduction in both the volume and the height of the scars at the 12-week follow-up visit further appeared to show the potential efficacy of our RAP device for the treatment of keloid and hypertrophic scars. In addition, we believe this proof of concept trial provides early support for the RAP device's impact on other fibrotic disorders. The same mechanism of action that worked to reduce keloid and hypertrophic scars may be far-reaching and important for such indications as capsular contraction, Peyronie disease, and even liver fibrosis. To close, I'm very pleased with the progress made during the quarter and highly optimistic about the future of solid time. We are hyper-focused on building an innovative, multi-indication device that provides our customers the latest technology in the aesthetic market. Now, let me pass the call over to Lori to review our financial performance. Thank you, Chris, and good morning, everyone. For the first quarter, operating expenses were $3.3 million as compared to $2.4 million in the first quarter of 2019. The increase is primarily attributed to higher research and development expenses, resulting from greater spending with development partners and costs related to our ongoing clinical trials for cellulite. Net loss for the first quarter ended March 31, 2020, was $3.3 million, or $0.19 cents per share, on a basic and diluted basis. For the same period in the prior year, Net loss was $3.4 million, or $0.43 cents per share on a basic and diluted basis. As of March 31, 2020, outstanding shares were approximately $6.9 million. Total cash 
was 7.7 .7 million as of March 31st, 2020, compared to 12.1 million as of December 31st, 2019. We had previously indicated that our December cash balance would be adequate to finance operations into the third quarter of 2020. Given the modification in our timeline and the instability in the financial markets, we have reduced our planned spending related to commercialization and now expect our cash on hand to finance operations to December 2020, assuming that we do not encounter any unforeseen costs or expenses. Although our commercialization timeline has been modified and we are facing incremental challenges as a result of COVID-19, we remain committed to providing our future customers with the innovative rapid acoustic pulse technology and generating long-term value for our shareholders. I'll now turn the call back over to Wally for closing remarks. Thanks, Lori. Although the world remains in a state of instability driven by the lack of clarity created by COVID-19, we at Soliton have a clear mission. We remain optimistic that the aesthetic and financial markets will recover, and our team is working diligently to be ready when they do. We look forward to providing details of our future U.S. commercial launch once conditions have stabilized for our dermatology customers. And I'd like to thank our Soliton employees for their continued dedication and our investors for their ongoing support. With that, I'll turn the call over for Q&A. Operator. Thank you. As a reminder, to ask a question, you will need to press star than one on your touchtone telephone. To withdraw your question from the queue, please press the pound key. Please stand by while we compile the Q&A roster. Our first question comes from Scott Henry with Roth Capital. Your line is now open. Thank you, and good morning. I, I guess first, for clarity, uh, I wanted to make sure I, I was following this correctly. Uh, the Generation 2 approval for tattoo removal, now, it's, is that going to be the same product when you refer to the Generation 2 for cellulite reduction? And will the PMA or the, or the 510K, will that be filed with that same Generation 2 or is there a Generation 1 that you have to switch to 2? Uh, because I know there's no, a Generation 3 as well. I just, I just want to get, some, yeah. get clarity around all that. Yeah, Scott, this is Wally. Um, so I'm glad you asked that question. Um, it's, it's, it's simpler than it sounds. The Generation 2 device incorporates some usability features that are really important for the commercial launch. And so we, but there, there are enough of a change in the product that it required a special 510K. But that Generation 2 device is launchable. Okay, that then it, it's capable of supporting both the tattoo and the cellulite indications. Of course, we have to get the cellulite approval, but we'll be getting that cellulite approval on this same Generation 2 platform. So the, when, when we refer to Generation 3, that's um, an envisioned future version that incorporates what we learn from the initial uh, limited marketing launch. So that that device doesn't really enter the picture right now. That's a, that's a future opportunity. Okay, uh, great. That's that's helpful. So so it seemed like the gating factor to launch at this point is cellulite approval, and you know when you deem when you have cellulite approval and you deem the market for aesthetics favorable, you would launch both at the same time. Is is that how that's right. you think about that? That, that's intent, okay. you bet. Yeah. Okay. And uh, separate question on the keloid indication, uh, when do you expect to start that second dosing study? Is that a near-term event or perhaps waiting for a more favorable environment? This is Chris. Uh, as you know, we still have more proof of concept work to be done with SCARS to determine the optimum dosing regime for our therapy. This was scheduled to be done the second half of this year. Uh, at this time, we are continuing to evaluate the impact of COVID as having on clinical trial work in the field before we make any decisions to kick off our dosing study. Uh, we expect the proof of concept work to take around nine months to complete and read, and they need to do this prior to our pivotal study submission for the FDA. 
we still feel it's possible that we could initiate this study in 2021. The pivotal study, the right, pivotal Chris? Study, yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay. Uh, great. That That's helpful. Uh, that should do it for me. Thank you for taking the questions. Thank you, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Our next question comes from Anthony Vendetti with Maxim Group. Your line is now open. Thanks. Good morning. I Good morning, Anthony. Good morning, Wally. Good morning, Lori. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. I, I just, I just, uh, I just wanted to uh, check on the the plan uh, for uh, tattoo removal. Mm -hmm. I, I know the, the original goal was to launch it with 20 KOLs. And, and now, as, as we hold off, conserve cash, and, and wait to do it in conjunction with Cellulite, are, are those 20 KOLs uh, going to be the same 20 KOLs when you do eventually launch it? And do you have other KOLs set up for Cellulite? So let me, let me maybe start that off, but Chris and Lori, if you've got thoughts mm -hmm. here that would help Anthony, um, you sure. know, definitely add them in. Anthony, the, the, um, clearly if we were only launching the tattoo indication, it would make sense for us to select at least among the KOLs that get devices to select players who are what I would call heavy users, right? And, and that's a different profile, a different operating profile than, let's say, uh, a, a, a practice that doesn't do a lot of tattoo removal but would have a very high demand for cellulite reduction. So I think I think you're on to something there that we're it, we're likely to probably uh, th look. There are some core KOLs who we've promised the device to. You know they're eagerly awaiting this device, and so th they're going to have devices regardless. But the margin, I think, where we have the, the discretion to guide devices to players who will provide really important market feedback and feedback. We're undoubtedly now going to be choosing some players that we think will give us really good cellulite market feedback in addition to the tattoo. So it's a, it's a bit more confusing mix, but, um, you know, I can tell you that, uh, based on what the feedback we've gotten from clinicians so far, it's really clear that the unmet need in cellulite is a big driver. So it's, it's going to be natural for us to, to play into that, that heavy, at least uh, anticipated demand. Yeah, no, that's, that's helpful. Um, okay. and, and then I guess for Lori, if, yeah. if you could just talk about, you know, what expenses in, in particular – you have uh, cut or reduced mm -hmm. to push the cash uh, availability until the end of this year? Uh, is it specifically related to pushing back the launch, or, or were there other uh, cost reductions that you, you took to extend the cash runway? Sure, Anthony. Um, I would bucket our cost reduction um, activities into three main categories. One related to the, the pushback of our launch. So we, were, we pushed back things like the um, money that we would spend for fixtures and validation of a manufacturing line. So those costs are on hold. Uh, secondarily, there were clinical trials um, that we pl had budgeted and planned to spend uh, money against in the back half of this year that, quite frankly, in today's environment, we couldn't execute because patients aren't coming into <laughs> doctor's offices for clinical work. So those costs have been avoided um, this year. And then lastly, there were some G&A type, let's call them investment spending categories that we have put on hold um, in, in the meantime as we watch to see the market recover in both the financial markets and the um, aesthetic markets as well. So things like any ramp up in staffing has been paused, um, investment in system upgrades and that sort of thing also um, paused, Anthony. That's, that's very helpful. Thanks, thanks for that clarity, Lori. Um, appreciate it. Um, look forward to the uh, to the clearances and uh, stay safe and healthy. Look forward to catching up again soon. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks, thanks Anthony.
Thank you. And as a reminder, to ask a question, you will need to press star then one on your touchtone telephone. To withdraw your question from the queue, please press the pound key. Our next question is from Kristen Williams, a private investor. Your line is now open. Hi, yes, thanks for taking the question. Uh, two quick ones here. First off, what market indicators are you evaluating that would signal a market recovery? Oh, sure. Hi, thanks for being on the call today, Kristen. Um, we're going to be watching the aesthetic market very carefully for signs of recovery. Um, today, most um, cosmetic dermatology practice have, have closed um, or at least minimized their practice to the point where they're just seeking or treating, um, you know, patients with urgent needs. Um, and so we're going to need to see those practices start to reopen and, and see those practices start to have traffic coming in. We expect um, initially, the kinds of procedures that will, will start first are those procedures that patients have been waiting to come in and have redone, like Botox treatments and that sort of thing. And we expect dermatologists to initially focus on uh, procedures that are, are cash cows for them and that don't require cash outlays. Um, quite frankly, we expect capital purchases to be the last thing that comes back in the aesthetic dermatology space. So, you know, we are, um, we partner with a group of scientific advisory board members that are all well-respected cosmetic derms in, that are in practice, and we're in touch with them and in regular communication with them. Um, members of our board uh, are in senior management positions and, and aesthetic um, companies in the industry, and so we're getting really solid guidance and input from those players, and we'll take all that feedback and make a, you know, our best determination is the right time for us to launch our product. Great. Thanks for that update there. Um, more specifically, have any of your physicians reopened their practices and any feedback you can provide on the environment, if so? Sure. So um, today, uh, the physicians that we're talking to it regularly have not fully reopened their practice, but what has started happening over the last week or two is uh, planning and preparation is going on to reopen. Um, that's going to be, um, as everyone would expect, very much so a state-by-state -state decision as different states are operating under different stay-at-home and, and uh, provisions. And so we are seeing the first sign that doctors are going to start to get back to work, but it's just now starting. Great. Thanks for that update there. That's it for me. Sure. Thanks, Kristen. And our next question comes from John Furman, a private investor. Your line is now open. Thanks for taking questions. Um, I just had a question about the cellulite indication approval. Uh, do you expect, uh, due to COVID-19, a delay in approval? Yeah, that's a good question, John. Um, we have been uh, in touch with, uh, uh, you know, our regulatory advisors, obviously, uh, on a, a, a constant basis. And the feedback that they're getting uh, is that the FDA is, uh, it, the device division of the FDA is committed to continuing to hit their stated timelines. So um, uh, officially, and I would say also just sort of unofficially, the the observation is it doesn't look like COVID-19 is setting back uh, the, the device clearance process in that side of the FDA. Um, we, we're all concerned that, that there could be an impact there, but so far it, it looks like we're, we're in pretty good shape. The, 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 the big question for us is, is this uh, indication going to be treated as a 510K or a de novo? And as you may know, that that decision pivots on whether or not the the description of a a predicate device is accepted by the FDA. There are devices uh, out there that have uh, clearances for the cellulite indication, and we think we have a pretty good connection to those other technologies, even though ours is uh, is unique. The, we think the connection here between us and our predicates is, is actually stronger than it was between us and our predicates for the tattoo removal. So we're optimistic about the opportunity here, but you never know. 
And so if it, if it is a 510K, they accept our predicate argument and move it forward that way, it's probably, it's probably in the 90-day kind of time frame for, for an approval. If instead they don't accept our predicate arguments and they, they say, you know, this needs to be a de novo application, well, those are taking around six to nine months to, to, to process. So in either instance, uh, we still believe we're, we're, we have a really good shot at having both the tattoo indication and the cellulite indication in place before we're ready to launch. That's, that's the plan. Thanks for the color on that. That's helpful. And just one quick follow-up. Has the AAD given you a specific date or time to present the cellulite data? This is Chris. Uh, we understand that uh, the AD will be having their virtual conference beginning June 12th. Uh, I think it goes for a few days. We do not have a specific time uh, when our presentation will be uh, given. Uh, so that, that's sort of where we are right now. We, we'll okay. update investors yeah. with more yeah. concrete information when we get it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, John. I now pass the call back to Walter Klump, Executive Chairman, for closing remarks. Thanks, Operator. Uh, thank you again to everybody for uh, getting up early and taking this time with us. Um, if you do have follow-on questions, um, please feel free to address them. We've got uh, um, a, 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 an email link at our website for, for investors who have questions, and we, we uh, aggressively monitor that and, and follow up. And uh, right now we're just uh, looking forward to giving you more updates as, uh, as milestones unfold for us. And everybody be safe and have a good day. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your participation on today's conference. This does conclude your program, and you may now disconnect.